Hello everyone, it's Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo here for another Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. Today we are in Levski. This wonderful place where the downtrodden get to mine in giant holes in the ground and oh my god this place is disgusting. Well, it's not as disgusting as my hotel from... Ooh, the hotel in Austin I stayed in. The Super 8. Oh my god, I'm having flashbacks. Oh, never mind. Today. What are we going to do today? We're going to do two things. We've come to Levski, settled in. And I'm, I'm now back, waking up, and I've decided that we're going to go take a look at Teach's Ship Shop. Well, the assets that will become Teach's Ship Shop. And then... We're going to take a look at the Consolidated Outland Mustang. Now, if you've been following me, you know that I just absolutely adore my Mustang. My Mustang Delta, that is. And between my two characters, I do have four Mustangs. I have a Alpha and a Delta on this server as Batgirl, and Cosmic Cat has a Beta and a Gamma. So here we are calling the elevator. And you see where we are in the where in the back of the hangar area, or back of the customs area, and that is Teach's Ship Shop. It's right across from the two lobby elevators that take you up to the deck that you can summon your cars, trucks, motorcycles. Oh, sorry, this is a space game. Your buggies, rovers, and your space bikes. Right, so we're going to come over here. We're going to make sure that we hit the right button and take a really long trip downstairs. Oh, see, I did a little edit there so you didn't have to wait for me. So we're now on the teacher's ship shop level and we're going to take a look around. The assets are all placeholders right now and you can only imagine this being filled with different... Uh, I want to call them used car salespeople. This kind of reminds me of a used car lot, not so much a new car lot. So I'm wondering if the ships that are going to be offered here are going to be ships that are new or acquired in not so legal ways. Like, are you buying hot ships here or are you buying used ships here? That's the big question. I think in reality, we're going to be skipping over that lore element and it will be all new ships. Some people have already been able to see this area populated with ships. They've given us 5 million credits in the PTU to have fun purchasing the ships. But I've not seen an opportunity to do that. Every time I come down here, there's nothing here. I've seen Onboard Gamer's video that he did get an opportunity to check this area out and see it populated with some vessels, nuclear vessels, and uh, it looked like it was a very basic, you walk up to the ship, hold down the F key, point your cursor at it, and click. It's kind of like buying anything else in any of the places in the game. So I jumped ahead to where we can get a Mustang Alpha. Now there is going to be one problem with getting the alpha here and that is going to be that the hangers are still broken now not broken per se but they are Damn. the hangers awesome. are dark they're scary dark i mean like you expect alien to jump out from a corner at any point so we're going to get in here go down to our mustang and i'm going to answer a question along the way so i did get a question from I think it was Daggerfest or Dagger, Daggerfall, Daggerfast. And what he asked me was, do I think that the event that Sandy was talking about could just be a live stream? So let's put this into context. Sandy was walking back towards the signing table to take her place in line and sign everybody's posters, brochures, whatever it would be. So she had to get back there pretty quickly, but she was very aware of what the context of the question was. This person was from Europe and asked when CitizenCon was going to be next year because he got limited holiday or limited vacation days. And she said, well, there are two events next year. She didn't say there was an event in a live stream. And she understood that he was asking about days that he needed to take off. So she offered him 
the information that he needed to think about two times that he would need to take off. He wouldn't need to take off any more than one day for a live stream. She was talking about multi days that you would need to take off. So I do believe, based on the answer to the question the gentleman asked, that Sandy intended for him to understand that the event was going to be multi-day and most likely an event kind of sort of like citizen con all right so we are in the mustang and i just love the dashboard the the instrument panel is incredible it looks so much like an f-35s that i think that cig is starting to understand what we're looking for and if you could just maneuver and manipulate, drag and drop things on there like you can in the F-35, things would be even better. Now, you do give up the 3D radar scale on here because it doesn't look very 3D on there. But it does fit the design element, the, d the design consistency of the consolidated Mustangs. Like, they all have this beautiful instrument panel. In the beginning, it was supposed to be more like a motorcycle, but I think I like what they've done with it better. Now, the exterior view of the Mustang, to me, has taken a little bit more time for me to like. And, you know, I was trying to figure out what it was. The sharper and angular lines of the old Mustang really did, they made me really love it. And this one just seems like some of that rough and sharp and knife edge look is gone but then I start to see how it is actually much sleeker and it looks faster and I think that's more what they were going for I also as as a person who has a degree in aeronautics I also question the lack of a vertical stabilizer for in-atmosphere flight, but then I think of a B-2 bomber and I go, well, they're so advanced, the IFCS and the thrusters would more than make up for not having a vertical stabilizer, so just let that out of your brain. But I think it's the only thing, that look of the vertical stabilizer, that's keeping me from absolutely loving it and just liking it a lot. And that's me. That's nothing else. The Mustang is absolutely a beautiful ship. And it's probably the one I would suggest to most of you as your starter ship if you only had to pick one ship. And that goes without me seeing what changes that they are going to do to the, well, the much higher, well, not much higher price, but the higher priced Reliant series of ships. I don't know what they're going to look like, and the slightly higher priced 100 eyes. And I think they have a possibility of moving ahead of this, but I am, yeah, when it's between this and the Aurora, I'm, I'm Mustang all the way at this point, even though I do own quite a number of Auroras also. I have at least one MR, two LXs, and one LN. Two accounts now, remember, two accounts. Cosmic Cat only has starter ships on it, and she has an LX. She has a Mustang Alpha, um, sorry, Mustang Beta and a Mustang Gamma. And over here, I have a Mustang Alpha, a Mustang Delta, and an Aurora LN. Oh, God, just too many ships. Too many ships to remember. Most of my ships are lower priced, though. I am finding that this ship is very maneuverable, very reactive in combat, and I like it a lot. Let's go bring it down to the ground. That will be a very quick cut here, and I will be right back. Most of the time I get a new ship, I take it to Yella, because I love the ring system of Yella. I just love being on the planet, looking up, and imagining what that would be like in real life. I guess I could just go get an Oculus Rift and, you know, experience it that way. But I'm learning my lessons when I do these ship videos that the best place to take a ship to get a true indication of how it looks in the lighting that we would be more 
accustomed to is to bring it to Damar. Damar is like bringing it to the beach, like bringing it to a desert area, the Mojave, the Gobi, the Sahara, and just using ambient light to see how beautiful the ship is. So we're going to bring it down to the planet and try to land as close as we can to the flat area that we're pointing at. I know we could add a little bit more distance and go a little bit further out, but the way I see it is that the level of detail just opens up and all that area that's a little bit further down is just going to wind up looking like this area over here. 100%. I love the way that the canyons are, but if you look at it, there's a lot of elements that just start and stop and they're not believable for real geologists, but they're pretty cool looking nonetheless. And I am very impressed with how the procedural planets, procedural tech has been working on creating different places for us to see. I can't wait to see the moons of Hurston. So this ship is going to have a very cool um, flight model in atmosphere because of its aerodynamics. We don't know that right now because 3.4 is not out and the flight model in the future is going to start to simulate the effects of atmosphere. I think that the full implementation of that is going to be over time. Now this is one of the rare of well rare events that happened to me when flying new ships and the horizontal indicator is up. So I'm actually able to keep this at zero degrees as I'm landing. I'm not using free look, which I should be using, because I should be looking down to see where the nose of the spacecraft is coming down to. There could be a rock or something I'm going to come down on, or in this case, a hill that I decide to land on. You're going to see that as we settle down onto the ground right here, and the nose comes down to the negative 10 degrees almost. All right, we're going to jump out of the ship and take a look at it, and just see it from outside. Now, wow, wind, lots of wind over here today. One of the coolest things I like about this is that chin turret right there. I do make a lot of I do make a lot of comments about the chin turrets on other ships, but for some reason it just looks like it fits here. I love the way that it looks, I love the way that it works, and those M4As are badass. I, I would never believe how powerful they were until I started flying around in my Delta. So we're going to show some Delta footage here. We're going to just drop it in and see what the differences are. But this is a pretty awesome ship for a starter ship, and I'm pretty happy with it right now. Just looking at different elements of it, and let's move over to the Delta. Here we are inside of the Delta, and we've moved all the way to the third wave. Now, one thing I'm doing incorrectly here is I'm wasting my time trying to get the badger on target. I should really be looking at that tiny circle that's a little bit ahead of where I'm firing and fire at it so my M4As, my laser cannons, could get a hit like they did just there. It, they are just a very, very, very powerful weapon system that this ship has. The most useless, in my opinion, weapon system on this ship for fighter-to-fighter -fighter combat is the rocket pods. The rocket pods are absolute poo. They take a lot, like those instances where you have people just flying right at you, and you see that? All they have to do is just move a little bit, and they're going to miss. So those rocket pods are really cool and really fun if you're firing at a really big target that's not going to move, which you will be in the future, possibly. But I don't find them as useful as the people that design the ship do. I think that they're okay. Now, if we were fighting in Pirate Swarm and I was taking on Caterpillars or taking on the Constellations, they would definitely be useful. But here, not so much. And going through the weapon armament system, or layout system, whatever you want to call it, I did not see a way to change the rocket pods just into two smaller missiles. I'm sure that's not something they're going to give us because the uniqueness of this ship is the only one with rocket pods right now. But God, I wish I had the opportunity, if I don't like the rocket pods, for me to do something else. 
The Delta is still one of my favorite ships after playing through this full Arena Commander, which I rarely do these days because honestly I've been there, done that millions of times. I really started to get that love for the ship again. Now it is fragile and you do need to invest in upgrading some of the systems on it. It definitely needs military shields, a military power plant and military coolers. But in the grand scheme of things, even just taking it into the game stock gave me a really, really, really good feeling of competitiveness. I, I liked the way that this ship was being portrayed. So we took out the Mustang Alpha, we took out the Mustang Delta, and we talked a little bit about both of them today. And we also went and took a look at Teach's Ship Shop, just to show you how assets are being added into the game little by little. And although it's taken us five years to get to where we are now, or six years, it's not going to take us six years to double where we are from here. Because in the past, all those systems, all those tools, all the communication processes, and all the QA processes, and so much more, all had to be invented in that five-year time. And procedural planets. Oh my god. All that stuff behind us now, I think that our development cycles here, the ones that we get to see, are going to start happening at a much faster rate. Let me give a very big thank you to the patrons of mine over at patreon.com forward slash Batgirl. Without your support, I wouldn't have the funds necessary to keep producing these wonderful videos. At patreon.com forward slash Batgirl, you too can become one of my patrons. Remember, Patreon.com lets you support the artist of your choice with a donation of as little as $1 a month. Those donations go a long way to help your favorite artist produce the content that they produce for you each and every month. Also, if you like the video, please click the thumbs up button. And if you do subscribe, be sure to click the bell shape icon. You see it right there. Yes, that's it. And that will keep you notified of all the wonderful videos that I produce. Well, hopefully they're wonderful. And what's left for the future? Well, there's a lot of work coming out on 3.3, but there's also a lot of work that's been done in X-Plane and I have downloaded it again and I am starting to build my scenery and my hangar back up there again essentially just downloading them from xplane.org, and I'll be jumping into xplane again, teaching you all the wonderful things about flying in real life, I hope. And with that said, folks, you all be safe out there, and I will talk to you soon.